Hi, this is Greg Hughes from 90 Second Website Builder. In this video tutorial, I want to talk to you about the text object tool. Now, there's already a video about the text object tool, I know. But in this one, I want to show you a couple of other tricks that can take you a little bit deeper in how to work with text objects. First of all, let's talk about what a text object is really quick. That's what this is. I've just selected a text object. And this particular text object just has some random text in it. What's unique about the text object is to get to its properties, uh, you can't just double click on it like you would another object. Here's what I mean. If I wanted to get to the properties of, say, an image, like this image up here that says .com classroom, if I double click on it, it brings up the image properties window and I can deal with it. That's true for this object over here. This is actually a rollover text object. And when I double click on it, it brings up that window. But the text object is unique because when you double click on it, it doesn't bring up a window. It allows you to edit the text. So then the question is, are there properties for this object? And if so, how do I get to them? Well, the answer is yes, there are properties and you can edit them. Here's how you do it. You simply select the text object you want to work with and then go up to the top of the menu here under Text Tools and you'll see there's a button called Properties. I click on that and now here's a Text Properties menu or Text Properties window. And I can change some of the settings or some of the ways text is displayed by using these settings. Now, there's another way I'd like to show you. And it's found in the other part of the screen here. So what I'm going to do is move the camera over here to the right and down to the bottom. And you'll recognize the Properties Palette, we call it, or Properties Inspector. This particular window always displays the properties of whatever the selected object is right now. So right now I'm going to go grab this text object and bring it over here so you can see it better. Since this object is selected, the Properties Palette is showing me the properties of this particular object. It happens to be called Index Text 1. And so everything below here are the settings or the properties for this particular object. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to go get another text object. This one happens to be called Index Text 2. And as you can see, because it's selected, the Properties Palette now shows me the properties of this object. Further, I could change which object I'm working with in the Properties Palette by selecting a different object or just using this pull-down menu and deciding which object I want to work with. But in this case, we're going to work with a text object, this particular one. So I'm going to move this out of the way and select this one so that we can see that there are, in fact, some properties that we can set for text objects. Some you may not be aware of because by default, a text object appears like this with a transparent background, no border, and no padding. Well, what does that mean? Well, let me demonstrate. Let's go through some of these and you can see what you can do. The first thing on the list, of course, is the ID. Now, you almost never need to work with this unless, of course, you're working with a master page. And I won't go into that here. But if you're working with a master page object, you may want to change the name of this. There's a video and an article about that. Um, in another part of the website. But that's what the ID does. You almost never need to edit it. The opacity is how transparent you want this object to be. So you can actually adjust that. Let's make it 50% and see what happens. You can see that it's sort of faded out a little bit. It's kind of a cool effect. In fact, let's exaggerate it. Let's go down to 25%. And now you can see you can barely read it because it's more transparent or less opaque. But by default, it's 100% opaque. And that's why it shows like that. The position is represented here mathematically in x, y pixels. Now, normally to change the position of an object, you just drag it around and put it where you want it. And you can see that those numbers change automatically. However, this can come in really handy if you want to fine tune the position of an object without having to rely on the movement of your mouse. So you could actually go in here and type in the number that you want, hit Enter, and it will move that object to that position. Kind of nice to know. The same is true for sizing objects. What you may not know is that there is a background mode for text objects. Again, the default is transparent, but you actually have the option to put something back there like a solid color. So I just picked a solid color white, which is kind of a problem because since my text is white, that's not going to really look great. So let's change that color to, say, black. Now I've got a text object with my white text in it, and it has a black background. And that background is solid mode. There are some other things I can choose, obviously. I could use an image or a gradient, all those good things we won't go into. You get the idea. 
But you can do some other things once you have a solid or some kind of a background in your text. I'll come back to some of these others here, but let me show you what we can do. For example, we could change the padding. Now the padding is the space around the edge of the object. Right now it's zero because that's the default. That's the top and the bottom and the left and the right. That's what these numbers are here. Now normally they don't matter when you're using transparent. You don't need to see that. But now that we have a background, you might not want the text to hug the edge quite so much. So you could change that. Let's say we make these be tens. 10 pixels from the edge. Hit enter and watch what happens. Hmm, that's a little bit nicer. Now if I'm going to have a text object with a background, it would be nice to have a little padding around it. And of course, you can do that there. Now I'm going to set mine back to zero because I want to go back to the default. So now I have no padding or zero padding. Um, I don't want background mode to be solid right now. I'm going to make it transparent. And we'll just stay with that for right now. Let me show you some of the other things. This is something that's really cool. It's called angle. And again, if you didn't know where the properties were, you didn't know this feature was here. But this text right now sits at an angle of zero degrees, as it should. That means straight up and down. But I could actually change the angle of that. I'll go 45 degrees, hit enter, and look what happens to the text. Kind of a cool effect. And you can still move it around. You can still move it into place wherever you want it. Maybe that's a little bit drastic. We can even go 22. And there's some angled text. You can imagine some of the effects that you can do using this. But again, the default, of course, is zero. Overflow is something that actually I get asked a lot about because people say, hey, how do I make my text box be a scrolling text box? The concept of scrolling is actually called overflow. In other words, where do you want the text to overflow or how do you want the text to overflow? Well, right now there is no overflow setting. It's called none by default. But if you change this to scroll, You've simply made your text box a scrolling text box. Now, obviously, you only want to change this to a scrolling text box if you're going to have a lot of text in here that warrants the need for one. Because right now, since this text fits inside the box, the scroll bar would be redundant or unnecessary. But if you're going to use this and fill this with text that goes beyond the size of the object, that's where you'd want to add a scroll bar. And you do that with overflow and by selecting scroll. There's some other overflow settings I won't go into you can experiment with when you have time to do that. Let me set this back to none and we'll just work with our regular default text object. I want to show you what happens if you add a border. So right now there's no border simply because the width is set to zero. So the way you create a border for your text object is by choosing a width. I'll make it five pixels wide. And now you can see I have a black border five pixels wide around my text object. Again, I could change the padding to make that look a little bit nicer. I can also obviously change the color and change the radius. That's the roundness of the corners. I'll change that to 10. You can see that the corners get rounded a little bit there. I can also change the style of the border. Right now it's a solid black line. I could make it dotted or dashed. All of these little settings come into play and of course change the color too. So if you don't want a border, you just set the width of that border to zero and it goes away. There's some other things you can work with that are a little bit more advanced. You can look that up in the help file on how compatibility works. Let me show you one other thing about the text object that you may need to know. You always have an option of publishing text as an image instead of as text. Now you want to think about this before you do it because if you choose to publish your text as an image object, the advantage is you can use any font that you want because when you're using this as text, you need to use web-friendly fonts because not everybody has the fonts on their system that you have. But if there's really a cool font you want to use, one of the ways to have a display on everybody's computer the same is to, is to publish this as an image. A 90-second website builder can convert this to an image for you so that happens. Now the downside is you're working with an image instead of text. Images load a little bit slower than text does, so you want to be careful about doing this too much. And more importantly, an image is handled by Google differently than text is. Your text is where your real content is for your website. So you want to be careful not to mess with your search engine optimization by changing all of your text into images. You would only use that very sparingly because Google sees text differently than image. So without going into a deep discussion on SEO, just know there is a difference. But there's a time when you might want to publish your text as an image. And of course, you can do that 
right here just by selecting true instead of false. One other thing is you can make a shadow behind your text. Very simple to do. How far it's offset, the color of that shadow, how blurry it is. Let's just do one real quick so you can see. I'll go um, 10 one direction, 10 the other direction. Let's make that shadow be uh, maybe not so dark. And we've created a shadow. Now, it looks funny because it just looks like a big box. And that's because we're also using transparent. So let's go back up here and change the transparency in the background mode to something like uh, a solid color. So now, if we did this, we actually are creating a text object that has a shadow. And it's just a gray box behind it. So to really make it look like a shadow, I might want to change the blur on that. And I would do that here. So now I've got a, a blurry shadow. So the point is you can play with all of these settings and make your text look really cool and pop off your page. But of course you have to know where to go to do that. And you do that in the properties palette. Or once again, you can go back up to the top of the menu here, select your object and use the properties feature right here and get to these settings. Hopefully that will help add some pizzazz and some functionality to your website as you're working with text objects in 90 Second Website Builder.